Hello my soccer universe and to the review of the Europa and Europa Conference League evening yesterday an evening that I personally uh, yeah I was happy my last one and is qualified for the next round but I had to cut short uh, mainly you know it was a kind of a longish day already uh, but most importantly I didn't feel after the first slot and with the games that they were kind of scheduled to show in the conference from the second slot. I just decided let's take it easy, watch highlights this morning, which I just did uh, during lunch. And then I'll talk about everything that happened. Although I have to say there were some interesting scorelines and I think I would have enjoyed it much more if different games were showcased for sure. Um, I decided this this time most likely winners that are in the Europa League here and most likely win in the Conference League here. Feyenoord. Yes, Feyenoord. Spurs, <laughs> only fourth spot at the moment, which is a story in itself. I would say we'll start with Lusk in the Conference League because, you know, they won my team and for my international crowd crowd you might uh, this might be the only place that you ever hear about my team Lusk. Um, the game was uh, riddled with uh, some controversy ahead of it. First of all, uh, the big outcry why is Lusk flying uh, five, half an hour from Linz to Klagenfurt and the bus is also driving the bus drive is only three and a half hours. To be honest, I do understand the environmental concerns about it. However, I also see why they chose to do it. So, uh, because in, uh, it is a long bus drive and if you really want to regenerate just hopping on the airplane, uh, it just makes it easier. I wish, I totally wish that uh, airplanes would become a luxury again. So that's why uh, I do understand the outcry. But in the current situation at Lusk is you want to, uh, you, uh, you know, keep your energies the best possible. So uh, just saying about that, uh, it's a needless discussion in many ways anyway. Uh, and the other thing is Lusk had 10, 10 players missing. Uh, almost an entire team and not a bad team at that as well. Uh, I think four of those uh, were still out due to COVID. Others are injured. Um, it meant that on the bench there were five players, two of which were goalkeepers, one of which was actually um, dressed as an um, on-field player, not as a goalkeeper. So uh, I really expect, I, I really didn't know what to expect from that game. Um, Alashkert, I knew, is a vastly inferior opponent to Lask. We saw this in the first game when Lask did not play well and they easily won them 3-0. That's exactly what happened this the, the eighth time, time around as well. And I was happy that they won because otherwise I would have said again, yeah, we missed, 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 chances, chances, chances. Yes, they did. Uh, and then they gave up a goal, which they also did, but the referee decided to flag offside. Unfortunately, there is no VAR in the Europa League. On the other side, a penalty was not given for them. The goal by Nakamura was really nicely played. This is how I want last to play, but however, you know... Um, they said in the, in, in the run-up that Alashkert is really not aware of how to stop a, uh, a team like Lask where you open up the channels through through the middle and they are great at it. Uh, Lukaneda missed a free header, you know, open goal, puts it wide. Uh, I think Michael hit the crossbar, then uh, Alashkert would have equalized. It was not offside, uh, it should have counted. Uh, then another free kick on the cross cross crossbar went down onto the line, uh, and then the goalie is right there, but kind of trapped in the net. But it didn't go over the line. A penalty should have been given for Lask for a clear foul on Monshine, which the referee could not see. But if you see the replay, yes, this was a, uh, because he's kicked right in the shin. Uh, and then they make the two nil, and that's that. And I was hoping that they make a third one as well. Because, you know, Maccabi, that Tel Aviv, again, uh, had a better, you know, their last head-to-head with Maccabi, Tel Aviv, both on 10 points. Both already qualified, so it's only between who will finish first and second. And Maccabi, Tel Aviv has the superior goal difference. So, yeah, uh, last probably will need to win at Maccabi, Tel, uh, Tel Aviv um, in the next round to avoid uh, the playoff. Which, on the other hand, you know, bring it on. 
bring it on. Maybe we'll uh, end the campaign sooner. So yeah, that's it from Blask. Um, as I said, it was not a great game, but it uh, when, when they attacked, it looked well. So I cannot say I'm unhappy. I just hope that they will continue um, winning now in the league because it's sorely needed. Three points behind second to last place. Not happy uh, about that. Okay, uh, let's move into more in interesting. I mean, Flora again came to uh, came back uh, came came back from two goals down. Um, we talked Macau Tel Aviv, a big one in Group B. The the leaders uh, Ghent and Partizan were playing. Where Partizan uh, took the lead through a wonderful goal by uh, Urosevic in the 66th. Uh, however, Ghent could equalize and uh, are already through to the next next round. Partizan more or less through, but still not mathematically through. So. Uh, uh, that's done there. Um, highly entertaining game uh, between Randas and Jablonets. And yes, they're a little bit jumbled up here, the games, because it's by the um, uh, kick of time. Uh, where Randas totally dumped them in the game, had a 2 0 lead uh, right after the half. They managed they, 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 but they also managed to not hold on to on to lead and had four draws in a row, which uh, keeps their chances so and so, so and so, because AZ beating Cluj, AZ also threw. Like Ghent, Maccabi, and Lask so far. Not through yet. Completely unexpected is Roma. And again, Roma leading to battle hard to get a draw. Uh, Solbakken gave um, uh, Bode the, the lead. And Sharavi equalizes, and then 10 minutes later, Bodeheim uh, gives Bode again the lead. And I told you, Bode is a team. I saw it when they played Milan. It is not a team that goes down easily. Roma seemingly didn't learn the lesson. I mean, in the 84, they uh, get the equalized. They should have probably equalized before that. But uh, it's pretty embarrassing for Roma because Bode now uh, and Roma are all on to finish. Uh, top of, of of this group and the Roma better get now a home game against Luhansk a result uh, in order to uh, survive um, the uh, the uh, the group stage in the Europa League but they probably will have to go through up to a playoff which in a way is staggering um, let's look at the next few games uh, yeah Union Berlin against Feyenoord played in absolute dreadful condition it was foggy it was vague they had to get the uh, water off the floor uh, Feyenoord largely the better team they played in, of course in the Olympia Stadion which yeah uh, is the home of Hertha I'm not sure how Union fans like that one um, Sinistera gave uh, Union Berlin but Dustin Love from a very acute angle uh, then Trimmel with a great goal uh, equalizes. That, that, that was a great shot, but uh, Feyenoord was just a better team. And then um, Dessas really um, profits from a horrible goalkeeping mistake. I mean, he has he has, he has a ball. He wants to uh, turn it around, mishandles it, uh, miss handles it, misfoots it, <laughs> and yeah, uh, it's two to two one. Feyenoord could have probably made more, uh, and uh, then two Union players are sent off. So it uh, was not an uh, evening for uh, the Berliners who are now bottom of group Feyenoord. More or less through. It's just they, had, they have to win the head-to-head -head against Maccabi Haifa or get another point. Uh, but so mathematically not quite yet through. But pra practically they're more or less. Um, it's a done deal that Feyenoord can already think about the next round. Um, Köpenhagen uh, beating Pauk away from Pauk. Uh, yeah. Taken early leads through Sivkovic. Uh, all looks fine, but then Ankersen equalizes and Copenhagen had to has just a little bit more in the second half. Pauk really, really pressing then for the equalizer, but kind of fine. I mean, there, there, there was one scene that just needed to go in. It didn't. Um, and then they have a player sent off as well, where I, ch I still don't know. I couldn't uh, make it out in the high, high, highlights why. So yeah, Pauk uh, now in third place in this group of Slovan beat the Red Imps, of course. Uh, the next round is Slovan against Pauk, which more or less will decide uh, which of the two will go on. I actually think that Copenhagen will quite easily win this group now, although they have lost already uh, a game, which of course against Pauk. But Slovan needs to match that one. So yeah, uh, maybe Pauk is not in such a bad position because you have to, you, a draw and then a win against the Red Imps if Copenhagen does something, yeah, we'll have to see, but, you know, um, 
a draw probably would have been deserved in that game. Um, and then we are at the group with Ren, Spurs and Vitesse. Ren, of course, winning against Mura. Spurs, 3-0 up within 28 minutes. Uh, the last goal of those was an own goal by Rasmussen. It was, for, of course, Antonio Conte's first game. I have not talked about this on this channel. Uh, probably will not. I think he will. He is a betting on himself. And B, I think he will give those Spurs player, players a kick upside the butt. It's, I think it's a great hire for them, but it will be a short-term hire. That's what I see. Uh, so uh, every, everything happy. Three and three up. We can cruise now. No. Uh, Vitesse within 10 minutes equal, uh, almost equal. McMahon makes it 3-2 and then it's hang, hang on time. Uh, again, red cards at the end. Uh, two uh, for Vitesse and one for uh, Spurs or Romero going down first so uh rather um, nervy ending um and i'm also i would also be amiss to mention that karabakh with a win over kaira and basel only a draw uh, is also through to the next round already so let's move over to the europa league to the next qualified team with uh leon three nil over sparta prague uh the dam broke in the second half in the last half of our Ben Sliman, uh, Islam Sliman, not Ben Sliman, Islam Sliman scores two, 61st and 63rd, and then Toko Kambi uh, adds, adds another one. And in that group, it's all Lyon, Lyon winning. Um, uh, and the others draw driving points like Brent, Brent against the Rangers, which might have been probably one of the most atmospheric games yesterday. Monaco PSV, nil nil, says it all. Uh, we don't say more about that. Rasa Zag and Sturm Graz. Um, I saw a teeny bit of that because I first watched the car conference before I just uh, moved over to Lusk because I thought I'm missing uh, probably the best action. That was not a great game. But everything what you would expect. Rasa, the dominating possession, uh, short passing game, uh, very good. However, this time Sturm show showed up with a really spirited defensive performance where. Uh, they saved uh, players twice, saved uh, off the goal line, and then Sturm even took the lead uh, through Jancha in the first half. Uh, they quickly conceded an equalizer, but again, goalkeeper plus spirited defensive performance let them hang on, and at the end, they probably had, had, had even a chance to win it, which was more or less the first. Uh, they did this very first points for Sturm Graz, which keeps them in a slight sliver in contention. But you know, in a group with Monaco, Real Sociedad, PSV, you're not gonna make a whole lot of point. Monaco now the fav favorites together with Real Sociedad, a PSV probably would have needed a win there. Uh, Legia had a 1-0 lead over Napoli, however in the second half two penalties for Napoli turn it around. Uh, Zielinski, Polish guy, in scores in Poland. Um, and then uh, it was Mertens in the 75th that kind of gives the Napoli lead, uh, the lead. And then all dance break and uh, Lozano and Unas make it a very, very clear scoreline. Uh, and despite this group being really, really tight, Leicester only managing a 1-1 at home to Spartak Moscow and I think it was Vardy who even missed a penalty. Uh, Napoli looks now uh, pretty pretty strong um, and then Legia and Leicester we gotta see that um, Frankfurt come back from a 1-0 down uh, through El Arabi at Olympiakos. Kamada equalizes then the game is throwing back and forth in the end, a last uh, second goal by Jens Peter Hauge. Yes, former Milan Milan guy. I wish him, like with Andre Silva, all the best. Uh, scores the winner for Frankfurt. Frankfurt is through. Uh, if you look at the stats, I guess the table doesn't quite quite say, but Olympiakos and Fenerbahce will take points off each other. So that's why Frankfurt is through. Uh, Fenerbahce with a big win at Antwerp, uh, who now have only academic chances of advances. Uh, let's put it that way. Uh, Galatasaray 1-1 against Lok Moscow uh, and it gotta be said uh, with three goals in this group stage they've managed to uh, get eight points this group is one very very much of draws because Marseille also manages on, uh, only a 2-2 against La Lazio their fourth draw in a row uh, and now you know Lazio has one win, one loss, and two draws. Marseille with four, and of course, Lazio is one ahead. Lazio turned the game around. I mean, a Milik penalty, deserved Milik penalty, gave Marseille the lead. Then uh, an Anderson goal, it's initially was given offside, but then it, 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 it counted. Um, Immobile, in his, in his way, scores the, uh, the go ahead <laughs> goal just 
taking it off the defender and then running to goal. Uh, and very late on, Payet from an almost impossible angle grabs the equalizer to make it 2-2. So um, very interesting game there. Uh, that group is wide open. Galatasaray 8, uh, eight Lazio and Marseille 5, 4 and uh, lock 2. I think all is possible, but Galatasaray looks really, really well in there. As do Braga in their group now with a 4-2 win over uh, Lude Goretz. Mid uh get a win at uh, Red Star, Javenas Vesta, uh, which kind of was un unexpected because if the uh, Javenas Vesta would have won there, they both would have more or less gone, gone through. So a little bit hurtful uh, loss. Hurtful also for Betis. Bayer, Diaby scores too. Uh, but uh, the, sec the second one came actually uh, in the 50 50 second. Uh, the game was sort of uh, open, but Bayer scores cross goal. And uh, if you saw, Bayer has had a it was a horrible form as, as of late. I mean, they lost to Bayer, they lost, lost, lost in the cup. Uh, they lost now uh, on the weekend to Wolfsburg. Them getting such such a big win with then late goals by uh, Wirtz and Amiri was kind of uh, a big one. And then two red cards uh, for really uh, uh, ugly fight in many many ways. So uh, four nil there, and uh, both of them are still fave favor because Celtic is a little bit behind. They beat Ferenc Varos the second time, but they lost to both of these opponents. And then uh, Rapid had the lead, also with kind of a makeshift defense. Uh, but then uh, Zagreb turned, turned and is on uh, even in the first first half. Uh, Pet Petkovic and Andrić uh, turned turn around and very late. It's a 3 1 when Rapid is pushing forward. Uh, I think a 2 would have been just acceptable because then it would be a draw between Zagreb and Rapid, but now you lost the head to head, which minimizes the chances of advancing quite some. Maybe there is a third uh, place in there, but I honestly doubt it because it would mean to get points of West Ham. Which is possible because West Ham played a 2-2 draw and thanks to that West Ham is through already. Uh, so it doesn't look too bad. Um, but you need them to win uh, in uh, Elt Gang, which I don't think Rapid ever will. That was my journey all through Europe uh, with select games being picked. I thought it was, as, 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 as I said, I couldn't get into it, but I still... I'm very much in favor. I, I need to figure out. Maybe I saw another channel uh, that shows like uh, highlights from all games. Maybe I have to try this next time around uh, and not rely on the selection of Sky because I really thought this was annoying. Uh, that didn't show games that really interested me. Just gotta say it that way. In any case, please add anything that you want to say about the Europa League. Um, this uh, week, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.